Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. And I'm THD. And welcome, dear viewer, though you may not believe it and though the screen may not say it right now, to the Hellfire Comms playthrough of Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows, the second campaign of the game. This year was a free DLC released in, I want to say, September of uh, 2015, and uh, this, along with campaigns for Specter Knight and King Knight, I believe it was, Helldragon? Mm-hmm, yep, you're right. Yeah, they are free, uh, due to how successful the uh, the Kickstarter was. So, instead of dicking about with shovels this time, we're gonna be all, like, pyromaniacal with bombs. Because, <laughs> in this playthrough, we're gonna be playing through as everyone's favourite antisocial and awkward alchemist. Plague Knight. I really think the uh, additional campaigns for the main game, uh, you know, funded through the Kickstarter, like you said, is a really good way to extend the playtime uh, of the game. Because uh, Plague of Shadows changes just enough, like in terms of slight level design as well as the main character himself, obviously, you know, Plague Knight, in terms of his unique mechanics, to really make worth going through the game a second time. It's kind of hard to pin this chronologically in terms of where exactly this lines up with Shovel Knight's game, mm -hmm. you know, sort of, because some of the same events happen and yet they don't is really weird, but uh, it follows Plague Knight's own individual story and actually flushes out other characters and does enough cool, interesting stuff that it really made me enjoy this. And I'm really looking forward as a result to King Knight and Specter Knight's campaigns whenever they come out. Big pot of coffee in the background, by the way. Oh, yeah, look at it. He's, con <laughs> he's concocting the ultimate brew, the coffee of unlimited power. That's true. Uh, all that coffee will definitely give you unlimited power. I don't know how much magic is going to be involved, but hey, look, there's science, hell, Satan, all that kind of thing. <laughs> Totally doing the Hail Satan maneuver right there. And uh, obviously, yes, this is Mona from Shaw Knight's campaign. In his campaign, she was just kind of an apathetic, kind of emo, sort of mini-game purveyor. Here, she basically works alongside Plague Knight in the shadows, and she's going to help him concoct this brew. They both have their own kind of agendas, really, but uh, Plague Knight, he wants power. Let's just leave it at that for now. It was hinted in the main game, I believe, that uh, Plague Knight is that kind of guy who uh, doesn't really, like, none of the other of Order of North Quarter really kind of trust him that much or yeah, respect him or I anything don't blame like that. Him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, the dude is definitely maniacal, but I love how Plague of Shadows actually gives this really nice humanizing element to what would otherwise be kind of a one stock character when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So, the basics of Plague of Shadows here. Uh, Plague Knight's base drum, I believe, is like, it's set. On like, you know, the classic kind of you hold the button down, you jump a little bit higher in Shovel Knight's campaign. Obviously he can't shovel bounce, he's got bombs and whatnot, but he does have a burst jump if you hold down Y. And that combined with his double jump, yes he does have a double jump, uh, lends a whole new layer of platforming to the game, which I think is pretty good. The only downside is um, he has to rely on his projectiles to get shit done before you start like getting uh, different arcanas which take the place of relics. And you know, different like bomb upgrades and the like. A lot of the gameplay really centers around this uh, burst jump, and like you said, you can get other different burst jumps to equip that'll give you different effects and things like that. Now here is the main thing, you like pick up different casing, powders, and fuses, and you can create your own kind of crazy fucking bombs. Now some of the bombs like are, like the beginning bomb you have, that's kind of lame, but later on you'll get combinations that just completely fucking wreck uh -huh. certain bosses, and I'll try to remember uh, the particular kind of combos I use on particular bosses, and I think we all know the boss that I'm talking about. Okay, I'll just read this off straight from the wiki. Uh, casings are one of the main ingredients uh, in Plague of Shadows. They affect the trajectory of bombs. Powders uh, affect the explosion of Plague Knight's bombs, and in addition to the explosion effects, each powder determines the number of bombs or their effects that can be active at any one time. The base black powder that we're using here uh, gives you free at any one time. And fuses are the third element of the bombs. Fuses determine, obviously, the conditions needed to make a bomb detonate. But bombs will detonate on contact with enemies regardless of their fuses. The main thing you have to watch out in terms of the bomb is that, uh, uh, Plague Knight's attack, as a result, is not exactly that straightforward. Really what you want to be doing a lot of the time when you're playing as Plague Knight is you want to try and get in the air, as you, you know, saw in his boss fight. What he liked to do is he liked to get in the air a lot, and he liked to shoot downwards, and that's going to be very critical to fighting enemies and bosses and things like that. Some casings and combos will help make this easier, but as a whole, you really... I would say, like, uh, when you read the design documents uh, for Plague of Shadows, you'll notice that their goals was basically to try and create 
a character that felt very mobile. Mm -hmm. That, in a sense where, yes, his jump is limited, but with that bomb burst, along with the right kind of casings, you can do some really kind of interesting stuff. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're playing a Plague of Shadows, and you'll get a lot more mileage out of it. How was your first go around with the game? Like, when you booted it off, you're like, hang on, I'm not playing a Shovel Knight here. Have I selected the right game? <laughs> well, I mean, like, it took me a bit to get used to. I was anticipating, like, Plague of Shadows coming out, you know, like, a ton, because I, even though I got into Shovel Knight late, I was just close enough to it where uh, Plague of Shadows was not going to take that long to come out. And it took me a bit to get used to at first, I have to admit. I got frustrated with how, uh, essential the bomb burst is. Yes. Yeah, I had to get a particular type of bomb burst to really make me feel comfortable and things like that. And some bosses in some particular levels can get really tricky, especially if you do not nail your jump absolutely perfectly. But once you kind of get into Vogue and to how Plague Knight operates, I found him to be, and here comes a pun that we're all expecting. Oh, you're ready for it. He was a blast to play. Ba -ba 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 -da! Joke of the century. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this jump! This jump right here gave me so much fucking trouble. I died like 10, 15 times on that one screen <laughs> alone, because I had no idea how the hell to do it properly without dying. It was a fucking pain. Do you, do you want to know the secret to it, the trick that I used? Uh, you may say the trick. I probably did that trick, I just don't remember the exact trick. Uh, jump as high as you can without double jumping, then burst, and then use your hang time, which you get automatically just by throwing bombs, which is really nice. And uh, once you have blown up the cricket, just double jump to safety on the platform. Yeah, that's another important factor. Uh, like we said, he has a double jump in the bomb burst, but you don't have to necessarily use him in that order. You can achieve some really tricky jumps just by saving your double jump for the uh, very last moment. And this is especially essential when you're trying to use bursts that aren't related to pretty much the one I relied on throughout most of the game when I got it, as we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. I think I can guess what that is, but uh, we'll see how our playstyles differ, because, uh, you know, you're playing a Shovel Knight, you're kind of limited to the whole Mario moveset of, you know, jumping, well, maybe not Shovel, but you know what I'm trying to get across here. But with Plague Knight, it's kind of a customize your own adventure sort of thing. There's so many possibilities, you know, with the casings uh, and the fuses and so on and so forth. Even the bursts can be customized. Uh, as usual, Plague Knight still collects, like, jewels and things like that to buy shit, but you'll notice he's also collecting these, uh, green coins here. I am trying to remember what exactly they do. I believe with them, um, and I know we'll probably find out again in a later part, because it's been a while since I touched Plague of Shadows, obviously, but it's like, it lets you buy additional different kinds of casings and fuses and things like that to customize your bombs even further. You can use, like, potions, I mean, not potions, I'm sorry, gems, to, you know, buy stuff like, you know, health upgrades, things like that. So both of them are very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the green cipher coins that you'll see throughout the level actually unlock stuff, like, you, need, you know, new upgrades and so on, and then you have the ability to buy them using the treasure you collect in the levels. Oh yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, because you can't actually do anything with Chester, if I recall correctly. Uh, Chester will exchange the relics that you find in the stages, which is pretty funny, I won't give away how uh, Plague Knight reacts to them. And, uh, it's kind of weird, you don't buy, like, the special, you know, m Robot Master kind of powers on this. You get them for free, but you have to go out of your way to, you know, find the relics to exchange for the Arcanas. And, um... Another thing that's different is, you'll notice, instead of a magic meter, we have a power meter. And instead of, you know, just letting that run out and, you know, having to pick up stuff uh, to uh, refill it before you can do more, it will go up on its own, provided you don't drain it completely. Some casings will allow, give you, like, a particular uh, limit for, like, you know, bombs and how many times you can use particular effects and things like that. Another important uh, mechanic I want to mention is that you'll notice on his life meter, uh, he actually has the four standard health globes you begin the game with, and he has a fifth one encased in, like, green or whatever. These are basically the potions next to that. He can use them to not only heal, but also to temporarily extend his life bar, and this is helpful because he doesn't necessarily have the immediate survivability that Shovel Knight eventually gets. Very fitting for an alchemist to use tonics to increase his health. Uh, you do get, like, base health upgrades at, like, certain points uh, throughout the game, but be, 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 like, wary when using said tonics, because they will basically vanish upon death. So no matter which continuity you are in, Plague Knight or Shovel Knight, Black Knight is still a complete cock. Well, he's loyal to the Enchantress. He's got his mission. 
The Panicky Pushover. That's a nice name for him. <laughs> I want that to be playing next new, like, subtile Inspector Knight's campaign. Oh, shit. Fucking blown out, mate. Man, this is even my Plague Knight. Not Plague Knight, I'm sorry. Black Knight, of all people. That's bad. Oh, why are there so many knights? The IGN guy didn't say there would be this many knights. Oh, this is a terrible playthrough. So how would you say the uh, Black Knight uh, fight here compares to the initial uh, Shovel Knight version? Uh, I would say there are some members of the Order of Nerd Quarter who are more suited uh, for Plague Knight to fight, uh, some that are less suited for Plague Knight to fight. I would say Black Knight is one of the uh, more tricky ones just because of how maneuverable uh, he is and uh, you know how kind of crappy uh, Plague Knight's base jump is. I, t I tell you who's a pushover for Plague Knight. Treasure Knight, oh boy, you thought it was easy in the main campaign, you ain't seen nothing yet. And by then you'll have the casings you can do to just completely rack up damage like a complete boss. I personally found Black Knight uh, not as hard as Plague Knight because of the fact like I was able to kind of use the bombs and he was walking into them. And you didn't have to get up necessarily as close to him, which I found was a lot easier. Okay. I don't think that people are going to react happily to a member of, like, the Order of No Quarters bopping into town. I love how they handled the village uh, in this campaign, Ashley. I got a little bit stuck here because I wasn't exactly sure on how to proceed, but once you know what to do, it actually opens up a really cool, interesting area we never saw in the main game. Yeah, because if you tried to go left here as Shovel Knight, you just go back to the map. Hmm. Those look like explosive barrels stocked next to that house. Be a shame if something blew them up. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, this is our opportunity to completely indulge in 100% Junkrat for you, uh, Overwatch fans here. Bye-bye! Yeah, I don't need a secret entrance. Fuck it, I'll just get rid of it. So, whose house was that exactly? I think that was this guy's. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well, moving on. Yeah, Plague Knight don't give a fuck. Fuck that noise. <laughs> I can't concoction slippery, mate. Always wait in shit when you're an evil villain. Oh, I love that. I love when you see stories from, like, other characters' perspectives. Uh, like I said, you know, Plague Knight and Shovel Knight's thing will actually kind of intersect in some interesting ways, especially when we get to the Explodatorium. <sighs> oh, man. I, I marked out, to use a wrestling term, when I first played through that. That was pretty cool. Oh, we're getting to it, we're getting to it, don't worry. Until then, take us down to our secret laboratory, Mona. This is going to be so cool, you guys will love this. Yeah, we'll have to borrow it after kicking their asses. asses. Quotation marks, quote unquote. So this is a good idea. Let's get famous by making the gigantic explosion. That'll work out, definitely, and probably won't backfire. Here we go. Whee! Yeah, you never thought this was down here. I certainly didn't. I was taken back as surprise, and then I was like, whoa, that's actually kind of cool. I mean, I love this background. Look at all the detail that's going on, all the stuff that's happening. It's great. It feels a little bit like something out of Hellboy. Still don't know what, like, the, uh, the blue flames are. Is that, like, smoke or something? I don't know. I guess that just happens when you're an alchemist. Uh, probably just potion fumes, to be honest. Okay, there we go. See, we already have a few options. We don't necessarily have anything that's going to completely kill the game yet. Hmm. Hmm, let's see. What should I buy here? There's lots of good stuff. This, in particular, is catching my fancy. Yeah, uh, for me, the float burst was absolutely essential to, uh, you know, doing the game. Like, all the way through. Yep, so. Pretty much when you burst in the air, uh, you can float, and then you can just kind of drop down real fast when you need to. And it is an absolute godsend, your first run through. And you have no idea how to correctly aim your damn jumps like me. So, j consider it if you need to load it up. Okay, we have nowhere near the amount of cypher coins needed to unlock the next batch of upgrades, and Mona's gonna get a little bit shirty here. I mean, we are wasting her time, after all. I wonder who's taking these uh, cypher coins in order to uh, get this stuff, because she mentioned something about having a shoestring budget. I'm gonna assume there's, like, some sort of Amazon for alchemists that take this kind of money. Is it, like, Bitcoin, when I think about it? Hmm, maybe so. 
And of course, as we can tell here, uh, Plague Knight will definitely get his own set of individual armors later on in the game. Mm, we probably won't be seeing them for quite a while, though. You uh, have to do something like particular to unlock that uh, little shop. And of course, this being uh, Plague Knight's underground, he has his own minions, he has his own unique characters, and some characters that actually come over from the town above in order to help them out in new and exciting roles. I, I can't believe this person who gave us magic upgrades I think in Shovel Knight's campaign, it may be a different character, I'm not sure. She'll be uh, essentially providing the same service for her. Uh, she also sells tonics and the like. Ooh, that could have upgraded my power meter here. Ah, well. I mean, it's fine, you'll get enough money in due time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Once we go visit King Knight and get his essence, we'll be just dripping in gold. I really like this guy, um, I believe he was the guy who made, like, the, uh, catapult that you took, uh, in Shovel Knight's campaign. What he does is that he takes the music notes that you find, uh, throughout, like, you know, the different levels, and what he would, uh, he's trying to find paper to write shit on, so you can actually sell them back to him in order to get more money, and I just kind of like that as that character. And then there's that crazy thing on the left who we'll get to in a second. Kind of creeping me out, man. Oh, Jesus! He gets down with it, which is always encouraged when you, you're Bojack Horseman over here. Oolong, Oolong, is that a reference to something? I don't know if it's a reference, I just know the Oolong from Dragon Ball Z. I'm pretty- Oolong, it's like, uh, 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 it was like a fucking food, isn't it? Because Akira Toriyama always named it- Tea, okay, because I told you, he names his shit after food. <laughs> and I had no idea what the fuck a Oolong was outside of Dragon Ball Z. Basically what happens here is, instead of, like, selling- or, uh, should I say, giving the uh, the musical sheets to uh, the bard. You basically give them to Percy. He writes on them, chucks them away, and Oolong captures them, and that's how you unlock new songs for Plague Knight to listen to. Also, uh, I believe you get an achievement if you throw bombs inside of his uh, tuba a few times. Oh, It's kind of violent. Well, I mean, Plague Knight is a violent guy. Are you really surprised? Also, that looks like that hurts him. Like, it really does. There you go. See, at least he's using paper properly, and he's not just recklessly throwing it away. You know, they always advise you to use both sides before you throw it away <sighs> so you can, you know, save on recycling. Yeah, yeah, it triggers me, so it does. One side only, please. Another fun thing to do is that you can actually throw bombs at his minions down there and just <laughs> blow them up. Yes, you can. I won't be abusing them for quite a while yet, don't worry. Oh no, you're gonna wait on that. No, no, I need to make your death particularly painful, my loyal servant. Hmm. Bomb burst combos. Interesting, interesting. That requires a level of skill that I quite frankly don't have nor care to demonstrate. Yeah, it should be noted before we finish the first part of this here playthrough, and uh, by the way, there's a second part coming today, uh, by the time this goes up on YouTube, uh, that uh, my skill with Plague Knight is nowhere near what my skill with Shovel Knight was, so even with, you know, <laughs> no death runs, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry, I guess. <laughs> we shall see you, ooh, this afternoon, roughly about 12 hours from now, when we tackle King Knight's level. See you then.